I feel like we're low. A little higher. A little lower there. There we go. Okay. Hello and welcome. My name is Melody from Melody Crochet and today we are going to be crocheting my chrysanthemum pattern. There he is in all his chrysanthemum -y glory. Here in Texas and in most of the U.S. you cannot do fall without a chrysanthemum so they have to go into my flower crowns. I made this pattern up new this year. Boop. He's so cute and so fun and so fluffy. Made this one out of Red Heart Super Savers. Most of you know that's kind of a stiffer craft weight yarn. So the one I'm going to be doing with you today, same pattern. You guys use whatever yarn you have. Use the hook that coordinates with your yarn according to the package. For a size 4 yarn, go with an eye hook. That's what I'm going to be doing. But I'm going to see how it looks on something a little drapier. We're going to do some Simply Soft from Karen. All of the things that I use are you linked down below for my Amazon link. So if you want to click that to support me before buying anything on Amazon, greatly appreciated. But use whatever you have. Don't let what you have get in the way of you actually making stuff. So I'm going to be using my eye hook. This is my tulip. I have my unicorn scissors. You will need something to snip the yarn before. You're going to have a nice long tail to sew it all together. And a yarn needle. All of these are together. I'm not going to be using anything to mark my stitches or anything like that. This is very laid back, very quick, and you're going to have this flower done in no time. So let's get started. So just like the rose, we are starting with a slip knot and chaining for 49. That seems to be my magic number this year. So grabbing the tail, wrapping around twice, bottom one over the top, new bottom one over the whole finger, replace your finger with the hook, pull the long strand, not too tight though, and chain for 49. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And we're back. 49, okay. Now we are going to be single crocheting second chain from hook and in each one across for 48 total so that was one you just insert yarn over draw up that loop yarn over pull under everything on the hook and continue that all the way across for 48 It's my grandpa. We are babysitting her this weekend. She is so cute. But that does mean we have three dogs and a cat. The cat adopted us last month. She got home from being fixed and all that about a week ago. So it's good. She's had a few days to recover. Well, no, more than a week. Last Tuesday, it was a week so we can have two weeks otherwise we'd have her still alone and on her own which was very hard for a cat that is from the outside to not go outside <laughs> it was a challenge but we know it's for the best for her we don't know if she'll stay with us forever i mean she's she's faster than we are but it was hard keeping her inside while she was recuperating but we love her Have you guys ever been adopted by a cat? And there she is. Single crochets all around. Now you are going to chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work so you're looking at the back of those stitches that you just made. Now this might take a little bit of looking. Here's your one, two, three chain. Here is your first stitch. Maybe I could point at it right there. So you can see your little chains. They look like braids right there. Cover those up and you'll see your last stitch. And that's where you want to place nothing. Don't do anything there. And nothing in the next one. The third actual stitch from your last row, you're going to slip stitch. We're in essence going to be making a bunch of little gaps. Chain for three, one, two, three. Skip two stitches, one skip, two skip, 
That's where he goes, the third one now. Slip stitch. You're going to do that all the way across. Chain, oops, chain three. Nice and loose. Don't make them tight chains. Skip two. Slip stitch in your third. Do that all the way across. There we are. Last one. You have 16 little chain three loops. And you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And again. One, two, three. Turn your work. Slip stitch into the first one. So you're going to repeat that four times total. So three more. You chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six and slip stitch into the same space. We need two more sets in there. Oops. Six, slip stitch. And again. Four little loops total. One, two, three, and four. Now you slip stitch into the next chain three space and do it again. This is how we're treating the first four chain spaces. And there is our four chain spaces full of four sets of chain six and all those slip stitches. Now for the next portion, you are going to slip stitch into the next area and then chain eight. Now this is just going to be just like the last time in the next four chain spaces, but we need them to be a little bit longer. So this gets a little bit fuller. So slip stitch in. Chain for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slip stitch into the same chain. There's one. Three more times in the same space. Here's number three. And four. So you can see they're getting just a little bit taller than the last bunches. And that's what you want. So slip stitch into the next one and repeat that. Four sets of chain eights the next quarter. So four chain three spaces. <laughs> it's looking a bit messy, but that's the desired concept. It's going to look even messier by the time we're done. So first eight chains of last row are full. And the next four, we are going to put five sets of chain 10. So slip stitch on in. We want these guys full. You know what I mean? Slip stitch into the next space. Chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Woo! Slip stitch in. Do it again. Five total times.
We're at four. One more. Make it fit. Slip stitch in. Last one. Very good. <clears throat> so there's our five chain tens with slip stitches. Doing the next three so we fill up all four. And there's our next four. They are looking super full. And the last four loops, we are going to be doing six chain twelves. So get yourself comfy because that's a second. This is probably the most time consuming part of this <laughs> pattern. <laughs> and it's really not time consuming. It just feels it after the last ones because, you know, anytime you get more stitches, it's like that shawl where you have more stitches every row. It might not be that many at the end, but it sure does feel like a while because at the beginning it was like four stitches in a row. But as it were, we're going to slip stitch into the next chain space, chain 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12, slip stitch in, and again. If any of you are new crocheters looking to practice your chains, I guess this would be a really great pattern for you. There's three. Six total chains in this first space. One more. And there it is. Six chain twelves in one space. It's going to be a bit that you want it to be bulky like that. So repeat that in the last three loops. Ooh, there it is. Gracious. I hope you stopped to hydrate. That was crazy. But we completed. Now let's fasten off our yarn. Yep. Yarn over, pull through, give yourself a very nice long tail to sew with. through before you before you start rolling let's thread that needle so that we don't have to do it once your flower is exactly where you want it start from the little end there is no right side or wrong side the only side that's important is this edge and keeping that all in one place. Don't think about these. That'll just happen on its own. Just start rolling. Don't lose any edges. By lose any edges, I mean like you don't want to like go over it. You want to keep the edge of every row visible. Just push the petals out of the way. That's how it opens up.
<laughs> they are getting in the way and that is exactly how we want it. Nice and fluffy. So curious how this Simply Soft is going to work in. I will say that the thinner yarn is making it so this part smashes down a lot more so the petals and their fullness it's a little bit more challenging to sew it together like right now but that's okay if it turns out prettier I'm willing to work for it so there's where it stopped I'm gonna go in there first just right in the side and wiggle through every single row to have captured one. That's okay. Come back through every single row again. Do that about eight times all the way around the edges just to make sure everybody is accounted for. You don't have to cinch down, just have to sew through everything. <laughs> there he goes. Come here. Before finishing, I'll take a peek. See how it's looking. This guy looks like it's kind of falling out a little bit. Make sure he's sewn in really well. There we go. I went way up there to make sure that that side that looked like it was kind of flopping out wasn't actually flopping out. It might not have been, it might have been, but we'll make sure it doesn't. Since it's the same color yarn, you're not going to be able to see it. So it's okay to really get in there. I'm going to go through one more time. There he is. Okay. And then little double knot action up here. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like it in the camera. It's showing up okay, even though it's the same color. There's a lot of yellow going on in this frame. Boop! There it is. Snip. Or leave it long. Depends on what you're going to do with it. And there he is. Sunshine Yellow Karen Simply Soft Chrysanthemum. Let's compare. What do you think? What's your favorite? I think I love them both for different things. Super pretty. Please like, please subscribe. I will be making more flowers in this series for my flower crown in the next couple days. Aside from that, I do tutorials. I do reviews of yarn and notions. I would love if you have any suggestions of things you would like me to make and or talk about. And on Fridays, I do my podcast. So I'll see you then.